Hey everybody, I have such a cool guest with me here today. It's a little different in the topics that I typically run on the show, but one that I think impacts all of us. My friend, Carl, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hello, I'm Carl Meyer. My company's Abundant, and I'm very excited about the release of my new book. It's entitled Surfing Economic Chaos. You can see it over my shoulder there. And what it talks about is these big trends happening in the world today, demographics, policy shifts, and how that impacts the American economy, what that means for businesses in terms of opportunities. And that also applies to individuals as well. Yeah. Well, there's a lot going on in the economy. I mean, if you turn on any news station, there's so much going on or not going on, and it kind of freaks us out. We're all impacted. Um, okay, we all go grocery shopping, shopping, and prices have gone up dramatically. That's the economy. So you and I agreed that we would talk about the good stuff, right, on this show. So share with the audience something for us to look forward to in your book and in your work, Carl. One of the big trends going on is the demographics are shifting. We're seeing aging of the population. I think we've all heard that, baby boomers mm. retiring. And that's having some big impacts on the labor force and also inflation. It's easy to, you know, you go to the grocery, like you said, and we see kind of the negative impacts of inflation. Some of the reasons that that inflation is happening really comes back to the labor force. And what we're seeing is a transition in several ways back to almost like 50 years ago mm. when you could make a living as a blue collar worker and have a middle class living. And what I see is a transition back to something not exactly the same, but something like that, where people who kind of work for a living, you're not, you know, a multi gazillionaire that you can still, you, that the reason we're seeing inflation is that these people are earning more money relative to society. Hmm. So what do we have to look forward to in that then with the shift? Because that's pretty serious. Serious. It has a lot of impl implications. But for most of us who, like I say, you know, we're not, you know, pov poverty stricken, but we're not gazillionaires either. We're working for a living. We're seeing our relative wages going up. And so that's positive news. And it, that's going to keep going for five or probably more like 10 years into the mm. future. So it's not all going to happen overnight. And, you know, we're going to have to, you know, there's going to be adjustments as grocery prices go up and there's pressure on people. But I really, everything I've, I've done in terms of analysis says that the middle class is going to be better off in the United States 10 years from now than they were five years ago. I love that you said that. I will repeat it. You're saying the middle class will be better off. So with that, I guess we have to be patient because fluctuations, or we'll say the chaos, takes time to catch up, right? So we see the grocery prices go up and we just await our salaries to match that, right? So things are just all going up. But based on what you're saying to us is that it's a positive trend for all of us, which is great news. Great news. I think we all need that after what's happened in the past few years. We have supply chain. Like, there's everything going on. So I love that. So tell it, your book will be launched next month. Tell us something else that we could look forward to in, in the purchase of your book, Carl. Well, the interesting thing to me is to get a sense of why all this chaos is happening. I mean, we look at the news, banks are failing, inflation's high, you know, all sorts of craziness going on in the world. You know, what my book tries to do in a fairly short, you know, period, if short amount of reading, right, is, right. To, is to explain that there are a couple of big trends that are really driving these, these situations. And it plays out very differently in other parts of the world. Some countries 
are very likely to be impacted, not in a good way. Mm. Some countries will, you know, do pretty well, will do actually quite well. And, but the United States, I really go through a whole chapter of explaining why the United States is in such good shape in terms of our food, energy, materials, labor and demographics, and security. So, you know, it's a really strong combination for the United States. So as Americans, we're, you know, we're very fortunate. That is a load off, Carl, because I'll be honest with you, like we're fed so much the opposite of what you're sharing, right? It's so good to lean into the good news, which is why I agree. Like, yes, I want to get the word out there that what you have to say is so important to our ears. It is music to my ears to know that, you know, we're in a great position. We live and work and breathe in the greatest country in the world. And you're reaffirming that for us. So, so grateful to understand and know that. And you've done that research in your book, which will be available uh, next month. What else do, so there's growth. There'll be growth at the business level. From an individual level, we'll see salaries grow up, go up. What else can we share then, Carl, with the audience? Again, it's more great, good light. Yeah. Well, a lot of the book really looks at the business world. So, you know, but some of the, some of the big trends, you know, in addition to labor, you know, we're going to continue to see tightening of labor, which means the price of labor goes up, which for a worker, that's that's good news. As a business, it's maybe good and bad news. <laughs> um, you know, inflation is going to continue. So, you know, mm-hmm. expect it. Don't be shocked. And because inflation goes up, the Fed is very likely to keep pushing interest rates. And so interest rates are going to stay high. You know, if you're, well, Silicon Valley Bank, if you happen to be following that story, they really bet on interest rates staying low and they lost that bet and they had other challenges. So, you know, be aware that interest rates are, you know, don't just kind of hold your breath and say, oh, that it's all going to go back down because it's probably not. So that's another issue. Mm. And it's a big issue, too, for all of us involved. So it's, you know, also deals with purchasing of homes and cars and that impacts our loan. Right. That's the interest rate on the loan. So in your book or here today, do you have any suggestions if we're contemplating any big purchases? Well, the the number one suggestion is, you know, understand that rates will continue to go up and just build that into your planning. I mean, so many of us, you know, if we're going to buy a home, almost everybody borrows money. And so that will have an impact on home prices. I mean, if you go back to the, you know, 70s and 80s, interest rates were higher. You know, I've I've been around a little while and when I was young, man, my first house, I was... I was thrilled to get a a like a government supported loan that was only at 8%. So um you know the interest rates can stay high for a long time. In fact, I'd argue that the last 20 years have been an unusually low interest rate environment. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, we got spoiled, right? We yeah. were spoiled. I want to say that they were as close to zero as they're ever going to get. And a lot of people might feel that there was a missed opportunity. However, um, the intention, if I'm not, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the intention of raising the interest rates is to slow down the economy, right? Basically, basically. yeah. And it's trying to balance it out. That's really what we're trying to do. Right, right. You know, we're, we're seeing manufacturing come back to the United States, you know, when that puts pressure on inflation, but it's also great for manufacturing jobs. Those are reliable jobs. You know, the workforce is shrinking, so that's pushing inflation up, you know, so, but that's good news for workers that are going to get paid higher wages. Right. So, it, you know, there's, there's definitely, you know, uh, life is so many things in life are finding the balance you know we want to exercise but you know we don't want to spend all day exercising we've got to do other things so right 
Right. So I, I guess the mindset is then, Carl, is, you know, maintaining flexibility and being nimble with our choices and knowing that we shouldn't be, you know, torn if something doesn't go our way. Just know that things are going to happen. Things are going to go up and just live our life because we do live in the best country. Period. Period. We really do. And it's a, a lot of it to me is just having faith that we do have the fundamentals of a wonderful country and our economy is going to be fine. So if you kind of take the day-to-day -day bumps in stride, make the little adjustments we need to make, that it'll all work out, you know, over time. Yeah. And that's why, you, you know what, Carl, that's why I have this show. It's to share inspiration. It's to share positive moments like this, because this is such a highlight to my life. And when we had that initial discussion, it was like, yes, we need to have this on the show. Like I, like I said, it's unlike my typical guests, but you're a lot like all of the guests because we are sharing a light here in people's lives. So I'm sure you're going to have a book signing and something really great when your book launches next month. Is there a particular piece of clothing or accessory that you're thinking about wearing and how does it make you feel? You know, I'll tell you, some time ago, I developed the habit of wearing a blue collared shirt almost every day. And it really, it takes one choice out of my morning routine and I'm very comfortable in it. So it's kind of my little uniform. So that would be my one piece of clothing. So if if the, any of the viewers happen to join the virtual book launch party that we're going to have, they will almost certainly see me in a blue collared shirt. <laughs> well, there's a lot of good things. And I don't know if you know this. I've shared this before. Blue conveys trust and honesty. So your choice of colors is perfection, number one. Number two, I believe Steve Jobs and a few other people have a, had a uniform, right? He reached for the, I believe Barack Obama was another one who reached for that same thing just to make one less decision. So you are in a room full of brilliant minds that, you know, let's just make it easy on ourselves because there's so many other things to complicate life. But I thank you so much for your time today, Carl, and I can't wait to share this with the audience. If someone wanted to continue the conversation with you and maybe pick your brain a little bit more, where's the best place for them to find you? The easiest place would be carlmeyerspeaker.com. Okay. It's a great way to track me down. The other place would be to find me on LinkedIn at Carl K. Meyer. LinkedIn slash whatever Carl K. Meyer, and you can right. find me there. Right. Excellent. So what I'll do to make it easy, because your name, Carl, is with a K, I will put those links in the show notes just to make it nice and easy so they can find you. And like I said, perhaps pick your brain about all this brilliant research and good news that you have to share with us. But for now, thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. My pleasure, Francesca.